This is Environmental Science 2, Chapter 13, Part 3 on Population Growth. In this portion of the video lecture, we will be discussing problems with human population growth. Remember, developing countries tend to be in that stage one of demographic transition. Uh, so their birth and death rates are very high. Uh, and their population grows fairly slowly. Uh, a limiting resource in many developing countries is fuel wood. Uh, fuel wood limits the population because uh, in developing countries, uh, wood is necessary to cook food, uh, to stay warm, and in most cases to sterilize water. Another problem uh, in developing countries is that the local water supply uh, is used as, uh, as kind of a multi-purpose levels. Um, in general, many developing countries uh, will use water sources for drinking water, uh, for washing uh, themselves or their clothes, and they also use it for waste disposal. Um, the picture that you see here is very common in many uh, developing countries where animals and people will be sharing the same water source. The problems that arise with that is disease transmission. Um, the most common bacteria that is found in many developing country water supplies um, will cause dysentery, uh, typhoid, or cholera. These are all very nasty uh, bacterial infections to get. Um, many of the symptoms are very high fever. Some, uh, sometimes you'll get a rash, uh, lots of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, these are transmitted very easily through a water supply. And being that most people in developed countries have very little knowledge of what a bacteria is, how they can be spread from place to place, uh, causes the spread of these types of infections to be a lot more common than in developed countries where we have knowledge of disease spread and disease prevention, as well as medical care um, for infectious diseases. Uh, as countries' populations grow, um, what tends to happen is people move from the agricultural or rural areas into urban areas. Uh, so more people move to cities for either work opportunities or educational opportunities. Um, we call this the urban crisis uh, because many developing countries have very little funds to support the infrastructure of the uh, the infrastructure of the town or the city for the people that are coming in. A lot of times what happens is the influx of people um, overwhelm cities. So there's not enough buildings or homes or enough um, places for uh, work um, for these people that are coming in. Um, several developing nations have right outside a very urban area with skyscrapers and uh, new cars and um, all of these things right outside the town is uh, what call, what's called a shanty town. These are literally homes that are built from scraps, uh, cardboard, tin, what have you, and they uh, develop right outside of these very large urban areas because there's not enough housing uh, for people, but people still want to live close to that urban area. But if they cannot afford that or if there is no room for that, then they can uh, reside in these shanty towns. Uh, rapid population growth can cause a lot of conflict uh, between countries. Obviously, the more members that are added to the population, uh, those limited resources will now have to be uh, under competition. So everyone's kind of every man for himself. Uh, between two countries, population growth can also cause problems. Um, there are immigration uh, to nearby countries can sometimes cause a problem um, with <clears throat> taking a look at um, either legal or illegal immigration. Again, the more people that flood into a city, uh, that can be overwhelming to the infrastructure, to the general 
maintenance of the city itself. Uh, occasionally, there are some immigrants that we call environmental refugees. Um, these are people that are driven from their homes due to some type of environmental damage. Um, again, it's out of the people's control. It's out of that population's control. Um, you know, famines that are caused by a drought, floods, volcanoes, earthquakes, even hurricanes can displace people from their home. Um, and those people have to go somewhere. Um, a lot of environmental refugees, they don't necessarily have to be from, you know, this is something that doesn't happen in just other countries. Um, during Hurricane Katrina and Rita, there were several thousands of people displaced from their homes and had to live in the Superdome in, uh, in New Orleans. Those people were considered environmental refugees. So a refugee due to an environmental concern uh, isn't always somebody that's from another country. So the environmental refugees settle in another place, uh, then they overwhelm that place's ability to provide education, jobs, healthcare, housing. Again, that infrastructure starts to crumble if there are too many people uh, in the system. So how do we control this population growth overall of the human, uh, of the human species? Um, because basically, a country with a stable population can provide better services for everybody. Um, in our last uh, video lecture, we talked about the um, pyramid of population, taking a look at the percentage of males and females and their age level. Um, the ultimate stable population would have that uh, to be very even from birth uh, to about upper middle age. Uh, and then a significant decrease of uh, elderly people in the, in the population. <clears throat> Many countries, however, um, have a, a different shape of their population pyramid. Uh, we looked at our last video lecture how we can see developing countries with a very large number of people under the age of 20 uh, and a very small portion of uh, people that are uh, over the age of 60. You can take a look at the United States and our uh, population pyramid where we have the baby boomer generation of uh, that are now approaching uh, their uh, senior years. Um, so we have a little bit of a bubble with the uh, older population. Uh, the middle age portion between the ages of 25 and 40 is a little bit less in the United States. And then it kind of goes back into a larger portion of those that are under the age of 20. Uh, family planning is a way to, of course, to control the uh, human population. Um, there is birth control, different options for that, male or female forms of birth control that will prevent pregnancy. Uh, there's also surgical options as well for males and females. Uh, the only problem with family planning is that that can be a very controversial subject. Uh, socially, culturally, or in the case of some religions. Um, the use of birth control or surgical options is uh, highly unrecommended. Um, it is very difficult for people in developing countries, women in developing countries, to, uh, to get birth control. Uh, it is seen in many developing countries as a social no-no. Um, in developing countries, the woman's role is to produce children and take care of the home. Um, and many women are very uneducated about uh, the, the process of intercourse and pregnancy and child rearing. Um, and that is uh, another problem as well. Um, there are many different types of programs um, that help and go over to those countries to help teach women uh, about their bodies and about intercourse and what that can lead to um, so they can have smaller, uh, smaller families. In developed countries, um, we have a very uh, large problem of resources consumption. Uh, the developed countries around the world take more of the resources uh, but actually have less people. Um, we have low birth rates in developed countries. 
Developing countries have a very high birth rate, but they do not consume, uh, consume many resources. Um, but in order to achieve a stable future, both overpopulation and overconsumptions need to be solved so we can sustain our populations with the resources that we have. This has been Environmental Science 2, Chapter 13, Part 3 on Population Growth.